Hi, everyone, and welcome to this talk of uh, Go Beyond Mock on Mock Stubs and Fakes. My name is Peter Kowun. I have many years of experience in programming with multiple development languages like Python, C, and Java. And in the last few years, my main focus was uh, on backend Python ever since I joined Imibit. At Imibit, we have large code repositories that eventually control and optimize factories. And um, it's a crucial system that can do a lot of damage if not handled properly. So we try to avoid any production uh, issues. This is why testing, testing effectively is so important. And this is precisely what this talk is about. How do you test your code effectively? How do you use mock stops and other testing practices uh, to make sure that you are safe in production? So our agenda for today is to understand uh, the terminology of mocks, stubs, and fakes, to understand the, the capabilities and the differences between them. And finally, we're gonna learn how and when to use each type. So we start with the mock. Um, definition of mock is uh, something that replaces the original mocked object. Mocks can record calls made to them, so they can be verified later. And uh, this is an important uh, part. The basic mock has no implementation of its own. This is something that is, uh, distinguishes itself from the other types we'll see. Now, if you look at the chart to the right, here we have the tested logic. This is the algorithm or the class or the function that we're testing at the moment. It's also referred to as the unit under test or UUT for short. And this algorithm um, is dependent on something. It could be another class, another function, another resource. And um, this original resource is something that we want to avoid from uh, calling. We don't want to call that resource. So when we mock, we disconnect the original dependency and we replace it with a mock object. So the code that we test will now call our mock just for the purpose of this test. Now, why would we like to do that? We would like to do that uh, when we don't want the uh, implications of real world. It could be that this original uh, uh, object that we are replacing is responsible for sending emails or maybe moving money around, or maybe this is some kind of a paid API and we don't wanna use for every call that we make for uh, the sake of testing. Um, so when we have some implications on the real world applications, the typical case where we're gonna avoid using the original dependency and replace it with a mock. Now let's see the actual code that uh, generates mocks. Uh, in the example to the left, uh, we have mock example that why this is the code that we want to test. This code uses stripes, uh, which is a payment provider system. It allows you to move money around. It allows you to charge credit cards uh, and other uh, types of payment methods. And our code uses that library to charge the customer. So this function uh, receives the payment method, the number of items the customer bought, and the price per single item. And then we charge the customer uh, with the amount, which is the number of items the customer bought, um, times the item price. Now, we don't want to move money around, OK? This is important. We don't want to use uh, Stripe just for the sake of testing. We trust Stripe that it knows its business, that uh, they can move money around. And for sake of unit tests, we don't want to check that. We're going to focus on our algorithm instead. Now, to do that, we have the code on the right. Uh, this code on the right uses PyTest, which is a common testing uh, library. Um, PyTest convention is uh, that every test begin with a test underscore, and then uh, some kind of a name, usually describing a use case that we are testing. This use case is about a customer buying multiple items, and we want to charge them for multiple. Another thing that we see here and is important uh, with the PyTest is Mocker. Mocker is a fixture. A uh, fixture in PyTest allows us to have a setup and then a teardown uh, for our test function. Uh, this Mocker fixture allows us to create mocks, as we can see in line on five, and uh, patch them. And in the end, it will also disconnect the dependency. So in line six, uh, we replace the original dependency of Stripe, and the syntax is is as if we import that dependency from the um, tested code. So mock example, since we use mock example fi, that's right, a charge that's great, which is equal to the mock example fi, stripe charge create. Imagine that you are doing an import. 
the line number six replaces uh, the original call to the function, uh, so no money is moved. So when we call uh, line eight, which is activating our tested function, we're giving it some uh, random credit card details. This is not an actual uh, credit card number, obviously. And uh, we decided the customer has bought 10 items and every item uh, costs $2. And then uh, we can verify. So mocks uh, allow us to uh, verify the calls made to them. So we then verify that the customer was charged with $20 and the credit uh, card details provided. Obviously, this doesn't move money around, but this allows us to uh, verify that our, our algorithm is correct. Now, uh, we move to the next um, type of uh, mock. The next one is a stub. Uh, so stub have predefined implementation that returns static data. Now, what does it look like? If you look at the uh, diagram to the right, you see now a return area. So uh, this stub returns static data. It could be, for example, a list. It could be more complicated uh, or complex uh, objects, but it is static. So we use that uh, when we have some interesting use cases that we want to simulate uh, for our testing. Um, and here is an example for such a use case. Uh, we have the code to the left, the stub example that um, which is which has the "Are you feeling lucky?" method, and it, our punk is getting a random number between one and uh, one hundred, and uh, ninety-nine times out of one hundred, uh, our punk won't be feeling lucky at all, and only if the random number generated is thirteen will our punk be feeling lucky. And uh, we want to test that. We want to test both uh, use cases of this method. And uh, to do that, uh, we're using a stub. So a stub is just like the other mock you've seen. You can see the patch stub example that run in. Again, same syntax as before, as if you are importing uh, the stuff that you are replacing from the tested module. Only this time, we have a new syntax. The syntax is return value. So return value means that the stub returns a value and it will always be 13. Um, so uh, are you feeling lucky? In the first example, the answer is a definite yes. And the other use case uh, where is no, uh, it's important to simulate that uh, use case as well. It's important to use stub as well because if you don't uh, fix the return value on 27, uh, the test will pass most of the times, uh, but one time out of 100, the test will pass, it will fail. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to have flaky tests. You want to ensure that your tests are robust and you can rely on that. Now, the next um, item on the list is fake. Um, so fake is like another evolution of a mock. Uh, a fake has an actual simplified and working implementation. So the diagram on the right, you can see that there is actual code behind here. So the tested logic, our algorithm getting some result, but this result is generated via code uh, that we can write. The code can be as complex as we want it to be. Um, this is not just a static return value. Now, we use fake when we, we want to have a simple, lightweight, yet working um, environment. Um, many common uh, examples exist, mostly around the area of uh, databases, for example where you don't want to use an actual database and you want to replace it with something else. It could be a file system, it could be an in-memory database or something similar to that. And it will allow you to test what you want quickly and efficiently. So let's see how do we do that in actual code. Uh, the code on the left, the fake example.py, simulates a very simple uh, logging system where users are stored in the user stable. When we create a user, we convert the password provided into a hash uh, representation, and then we store that user in the database. Again, we don't want to store an actual clear case, uh, clear text uh, passwords. So uh, we use hash instead. And um, the login function uh, accepts the username and the password, looks for a user with the same username, and uh, if it found one, then we compare the hashes of the password and only allow login if the username and password are equal. And we would like to test that logic. So we don't want to use an actual database. We want to mock the user's table. Um, I'll test everything else here. 
So here is an example of a fixture. Uh, this is a fixture that we wrote ourselves, unlike the marker fixture, which is an available library you can download on PyPy. And uh, this fixture essentially has a user's database as a dictionary. So how do we do that? We use fakes. So in line 16, we patch. Okay, so we know this syntax by now. It's fake example that users table that add user. So this replaces this line here, line nine. And this time we use side effects. So instead of return value, uh, the syntax here is side effect indicating that we want to run an actual code. And here we provide the name of the function. So fake add user. This fake add user was defined here. It's a one line of function um, that for the sake of the example could have been much more complex logic. So we're storing users uh, with the username and the hash. And we even added a, another field uh, um, just, just because we can, just for the sake of the example. And um, that's how we store users into a dictionary instead of a database. Now, the second uh, thing that we mock is the get user. So now that we have stored the uh, users in the database, in the dictionary instead of the database, uh, we want to fetch them. And we fetch them this time using a Lambda expression. Uh, this is just to demonstrate you the various uh, sy syntax you can use, uh, which goes to the dictionary and gets the username, uh, gets the user with a matching username or none if none was found. Now that we have this picture, we can use it for our tests. So the code in the picture will uh, be executed before each and every test. So our first test is to attempt to log in with a non-existing user uh, this way. So we send the non-existent user and a non-existent password. And the assert not, again, we expect to get a false, a negative response from the login. Next, we create a user. Okay? So this create user uh, goes to this function to the left. Create the user, uh, our fake basically ensures that the user is stored in the dictionary. Uh, and then we attempt to log in, only we provide a bad password. Uh, once more, we expect the login to fail and return false. Our uh, third example is the login success, uh, where we expect a successful login. So we create the user and then we log in with the same username and password. And then we assert that the login was successful. Now, um, all those examples have used uh, different use cases and different code um, to, uh, to demonstrate each and every example. Now, what I'd like to do is focus on a single code, single function that we're gonna test using uh, the about three methods. And I'm gonna demonstrate how uh, using um, different techniques give you different results. And when is it best uh, to use one type over the other? Uh, this demo and all of the code snippets you've seen can be found in this GitHub repository. Now, uh, so our uh, code that we want to test is located here to the left. Um, this code uses S3 buckets. Um, so S3 is a service by Amazon allows us um, to save objects in the cloud. And um, it's a very useful uh, service, uh, very common. And uh, this function right here uh, moves an existing uh, item, an existing object, where the source key is kind of its path uh, inside the bucket. And we want to move it to a new different location, which is unique. So um, we generate with using UUID4 some uh, random uh, number, some random GUID. We replace every hyphen with a forward slash. So then we get to um, a destination of this form, obviously with different characters. Now, Amazon does not provide us with a move function. So what we do here in this wrapper, we copy the object first. OK, so we copy it from the source into the destination. And then finally, we delete the item from the source. And thus, we get the, the move. And finally, we return uh, the new location of the object. And we want to test that. So we want uh, there are a number of things that, that we can test in this uh, method. And we start testing using mocks. The first thing that we want to test is right here. Uh, we want to ensure uniqueness. So mentioned this uh, function is supposed to generate some unique uh, destination every time. And we want to ensure that. And uh, the way we're going to verify that is we are going to execute this function right here 1,000 times and verify that each and every one of the destinations are unique. 
now. Um, to do that, we don't actually need to move objects around because what we care is line 13, okay, the destination key. So what we do is we mock, and this is a simple uh, basic mock example like we've previously seen. Uh, we patch the S3 object and we replace it, okay? So this one will replace this object with a mock, ensuring that nothing uh, gets to S3. Now, the second uh, example that uses mocks um, is basically verifying um, the output format. Basically, this is a stub. Okay? So we generate, uh, we replace the UUID with some hard-coded value. And we expect that the format, that the destination format is of this format. Again, part of the algorithm that uh, move things around, we want to ensure that we have some uh, defined uh, format. Next, uh, we can also uh, verify the calls. So um, if, we call, if we mock and then uh, we call the function, we can assert that our mocks have been called with specific values. Again, nothing new here. Um, everything here you've seen in, in the presentation so far. So we execute the tests and all of them have passed. Now, does that mean that we're safe? Um, and the answer is absolutely no, we're not safe um, because neither of those tests actually have tested that objects are moving around in S3. We've tested some of the algorithm, we've tested for uniqueness, but we have never actually tested moving objects. Now, I can guarantee you, in fact, that this code to the left doesn't work because I broke it on purpose. I uh, changed the parameter here, so it's the wrong uh, parameter name. But let me break this code even further. Let me do this, for example. I've just invented some kind of a function. Again, it could be an honest mistake. And let me do that as well. Um, so now we first delete the object and then try to copy it, which obviously will fail. So this is a logical failure. Um, but if we run the mocks, so you can see that every single one of those tests have passed, although this code to the left is completely broken. So there's something obviously wrong here. And um, to our rescue, uh, we can use fakes. Now, we could, of course, uh, have a fake for delete object that check the parameters uh, and for the copy as well and make sure maybe the order of calls and stuff like that. But uh, we can actually do something better. Uh, we can use a library uh, called Moto, um, which is a fake for us. Um, because we use S3 and S3 is a very common library uh, for Python, um, we can use Moto to do the uh, fakes for us. So let me show you how that is used. So uh, you should know fixtures by now. Uh, this time we initialize an empty bucket uh, using Moto. So Moto is the fake library. Uh, it's mocking S3. We start it and we get a connection to it. Now, now let's have a look at the tests. So every one of those tests are using this uh, fake. So the first thing we, that we try to do is to move a non-existing object. Okay, so I've never created an object. Now I try to move it. Um, obviously, I expect it not to be found. Um, next, the other example is an end-to-end -end test. I would like to move the object and verify that it was uh, moved successfully including reading the data. So um, this is the source key, this is the original path, this is the content, some binary. I then create an object uh, because in order for the object to be moved, it had to be created in S3 first. And then I call my function with the source key. Uh, and what I expect is that the destination object that I'm fetching here, right here, um, its content, this is how I get the content, would be equal to the original content. So this is how I checked that the object was copied. Now, since this is a move function, I also expect um, that the original object in the source key is no longer there. So this is why I checked that the specified object does not exist anymore. 
Now, if I run those tests, you would get some different results. Uh, you would actually see what happens uh, when you test end to end. Let's start with the first one. Okay, typo doesn't like that. S3 does not have an attribute typo. Okay, let me fix that. Let me rerun the tests once more. So this is a different style of uh, programming as you can see. Then getting a problem with this call, the copy object. And if I look at the stock trace, uh, unknown parameter source, and it's actually accept, expecting copy source. So let me fix that. Now, when I fix that, obviously I'm going to progress to the next error, which is the logical fallacy, uh, which is here, the verify read. The, so once more, line 18 is the problem and the reason that we cannot copy the object is because it's not found because we've just deleted it. So now I'm changing it back to the right order of how it's supposed to work. And I'm going to rerun the tests. Wonderful. So now both tests have passed. I can actually be certain that I've used the right parameters and everything works uh, well. Uh, final notes about the mocks. If I try to rerun those, then one of the tests fails. And the reason is uh, that this uh, fellow fails is because I've changed the parameter name and we have actually tested for implementation, not for behavior. That's one of the things that could happen uh, when you use uh, mocks. You sometimes test for implementation and if the implementation changes, um, your certs fail. So you should be careful about that. And now our uh, tests have passed. Now the purpose of this example is not to discourage you from using mocks or stubs. They definitely have their own place. I mean, when you, when you want to check the logic, whether or not it's a unique item, uh, it's a unique destination that you get every time, you don't need to move objects around in S3. So perfectly good reason to mock it. And if you want to check the format of your generated uh, path, absolutely fine, you should do that. And again, no need uh, to move objects around, no need to actually use S3, it will be a lot faster to execute anyway. But you should not rely on those sort of tests to um, be certain that your code actually works. And this is why using fake um, is so useful. And obviously if you're using some well-known library or some well-known use case, like some kind of a database or perhaps uh, REST calls or HTTP calls, then usually somebody has made the work for you uh, to make the fake. So the best practice is to use a combination of those. So this, for example, is a sort of uh, implementation problem, not so useful test, but all the other tests can work uh, together, the mocks and the fakes, and then you have complete coverage of your code. Good. Um, so now here's a, here's a short recap. So we've seen mocks, we've seen stubs, we've seen fakes. Uh, we've seen the differences uh, between them. We've seen how to use them. Uh, we've also seen a few examples where using the wrong one can give you a false sense of uh, security that you don't want to have. So it's important to use the right one for the right case. Uh, worry about uh, Amy bit before uh, we finish this. Uh, we are hiring, we are growing quite uh, quickly. Uh, there are many open positions. If you would like to hear about any of those uh, or hear more about the company, you are welcome to contact me either in email or uh, through LinkedIn. And then I will, I will open it for questions. If anybody has any questions, can ask them now uh, or ask them later. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your time and I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.